Bill Costanzo, Livestock Guardian Dog Research Specialist at the AgriLife Center in San Angelo. Um, this morning we wanted to talk to you guys about GPS tracking collars, um, oh, how we uh, fit the collars and the trackers on there, um, kind of our, our tracking bag that we have and what's in it. And so um, first thing I'll, I'll do is I'll go over what we have in the tracking bag. Um, oh, so that's a portable unit for you to be able to take out and uh, oh, replace batteries in the field. So we have a cordless heat gun. Um, this one here is a Ryobi. Uh, there's a bunch of different companies that make them. Um, this one works really well for us. There's some extra batteries in the bag. A pair of uh, industrial heavy duty scissors. Phillips head screwdriver. Plenty of zip ties. Um, a lot of people have been asking me about the industrial heat shrink we use. So this is the heat shrink product. Um, it comes flat, forms into a tube, and then uh, Oh, this is probably the most important part for the um, either the satellite trackers that we use or the oyster trackers that we use is to make sure that you use lithium um, batteries. It doesn't necessarily have to be Energizer, but either Duracell or, or Energizer lithium batteries are important to maximize the life of the batteries for the tracker. So wayland has got a tracking collar on today. Uh, we're going to replace the batteries because his collar is almost dead. So I put two zip ties on the outside, one on each side of the tracker here just to kind of secure it, and then there's a third one in the middle. Um, it's really probably just a, an extra precaution. Um, the heat shrink is pretty thick and uh, is pretty durable, but we just like to make sure that we're not going to lose a tracker. So as you can tell, I'm having to pry off the heat shrink. It forms a pretty good seal onto the tracker and the collar. Now another thing that's important, um, oh, when you're changing out the batteries, <clears throat> is to make sure that the seal that's inside um, is still intact. And I'll show you guys the rubber seal here in just a second. does help if you have a knife. A lot of times the tracker seals up from dirt and moisture that the dogs get into. So right around the inside of this um, oh, bottom piece, there's a rubber gasket that goes all the way around. And uh, it's really important that this has a good seal and that you check it each time to make sure it's not damaged. Uh, we have lost a couple trackers uh, because the seals were damaged and water got inside uh, when the dogs jumped in the creek or in a water trough. So this is the actual mechanism that actually tracks. Um, you can see the batteries on this side. Once you replace the batteries, you get all three of them in, it's important, you probably can't see it on the video today, but there's a little red light up here. And it's important that this red light flashes. If it doesn't flash, that means that there's a malfunction with the tracker and you probably need to replace it. Um, it should continue to flash until it gets a signal again. But as long as you see it flashing, it's working still. Now one kind of quick tip that I found on replacing the screws 
if they don't go back into the case easily, it means that the rubber gasket has slid off on the inside. And so you need to take it back apart and reseat it again. Okay, also it's important that you snug down the each of the screws, but not to over tighten them. Um, you can compress the gasket inside too much, and again, which will make it leak. So just a nice snug tightness on each one of them. Okay, so the batteries are all replaced in the tracker. As I mentioned, I like to use three zip ties. The one on the inside really just kind of holds the tracker in place while I fit the heat shrink around it. So this heat shrink comes in four foot pieces and hundred foot rolls. Um, oh, each one of them for the oyster tracker, uh, if you get a four foot length of it, if you cut it to six and seven eighths of an inch, um, you'll be able to evenly get enough pieces out of it and not have any waste on the heat shrink. It does help on these cordless heat guns if you can do this either inside your pickup or by the barn or something. Uh, they work pretty well, but uh, it does help if you can have them in a place where there's not very much wind. So we found that we can get about two trackers out of one of these big 18 volt batteries from Ryobi that we have here. An important kind of side note while I'm heating this one up, um, Oh, you can overheat these trackers. And so if you're using a regular industrial heat gun that plugs in, um, you do have to watch the uh, amount of heat that's coming out of it. And it'll shrink down a lot faster than this cordless unit does. Um, the trackers are rated up to, I think it's about 200 degrees. Um, but the industrial heat guns can get a lot hotter than that. And so you can actually melt the cases on them. So on the heat shrink, we use a four inch size. Um, it comes in a variety of different sizes if you have different trackers, um, besides the oyster that you're using. Uh, it also comes in different thicknesses. The one that we found that works the best, uh, which I'm using today, is the, uh, they call it the two to one. And so basically it, it shrinks down about half the size of its original non-heated size. Is what it means. They do make a, Oh, one that has adhesive in it. Uh, we tried that the first few times. I wouldn't recommend getting the uh, industrial heat shrink from Elect Direct with the uh, adhesive inside of it. Um, you generally have to use a, a propane torch or some type of flame on that one. And uh, although it does a nice job of sealing up, it's very difficult to get it off the collar and get the adhesive off the tracker when you have to replace the batteries. So there's the finished product. Tracker's back inside. Again, the zip ties are just kind of an extra thing that we do to make sure they don't come out the collar doesn't slide off or anything like that. Um, so it's ready to go back on Wayland. Come here, Wayland. That's good. 
Okay, so it's as simple as that, changing out a set of tracker batteries and uh, reinstalling it on a collar on one of your dogs. If you guys have any questions, feel free to give me a call here at the AgriLife Center. Thank you very much for watching.